G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. I'm Josh. In this video, we're going to be looking at tree diagrams and how they can be used to help us solve probability questions that look like this one here. So, what about we just launch into this example? A bag contains five red and three blue balls. Altogether, as you can know, that's eight balls. So, two balls are selected at random with the replacement. Now, what does this mean with replacement? Well, it just means that after each selection, you put the ball back. So, we choose that first selection out of eight balls, we see what it is, then we put it back in the bag, and then we select from eight balls once again. And that's what it means with replacement. It does affect probability. So what we're going to be working out, what's the probability of getting a red than a red? What's the probability of getting a red than a blue? What's the probability of getting at least one red? And what's the probability of selecting one red and one blue? But not necessarily in that order. So like I said, we're going to use a tree diagram to help us solve this. So let's draw this up. Now, a tree diagram, it's going to have two different events. Each time we choose a ball, that's a different event there. So we're going to have two times where the, it breaks apart. What's more, because we're talking two different things that are breaking apart, we could choose either a red or a blue, it's going to break into two parts each time. So let's have a look at this. So first off, we could choose either, on our first selection, a red or a blue. So that's our first event there. Next, we could have... On our second event, we could either have a red or a blue being chosen. Uh, that's if we choose a red ball first. Or we could have a red, then a blue ball being chosen. That's if we chose a blue ball first. So this goes through and breaks down all the possibilities, all the outcomes that could occur. So let's go through and see what those outcomes are. First off, we could get a red, then a red. So we could get a red, then a red. We could get a red, then a blue. So a red, then a blue. We could get a blue, then a red, so we could get a blue, then a red, or we could get a blue, then a blue. So that's all the possible outcomes. There's four possible outcomes here. So let's go through now and see what the probability of getting each of these outcomes are. They're not going to be equal because we have a different amount of red balls and a different amount of blue balls. So let's go through and account for that. What's the probability of choosing a red ball? Well, it's five out of a total number of eight. So let's put that in. We have a five and eight chance of this occurring. Or if we have a look at the blue ball here, we have a three in eight chance of that occurring. All right, we can continue on. Because we're putting things back, we have a five out of eight chance of this occurring, or a three out of eight chance of this occurring. For a red ball here, we have a five out of eight chance of that occurring. Or for a blue ball, we have a three out of eight chance of that being selected. So now we can go through and work out the probabilities of each one of our outcomes here. So let's follow along the tree. First off, we get a red, then a red. The probability of getting a red first off is five out of eight, and then getting a red the second time is also five out of eight. Now to get the total probability of that occurring, we multiply. We have five over eight multiplied by five over eight. So that gives us a total probability of getting that of five times five, which is 25, eight times eight, which is 64. So the probability of getting a red then a red is 25 out of 64. What about the probability of getting a red then a blue? Well, we'll follow along the tree. We have a five out of eight chance to start off with, and we're gonna be multiplying that by three out of eight, so three over eight. Now if we do that, five times three is 15, and eight times eight is 64. Cool. To get a blue then a red, well, it's gonna be the same probability as getting a red then a blue but it's going to be worked out by multiplying 3 over 8 by 5 over 8. So let's follow that tree. First off, we have the blue, which is 3 over 8, and this is going to multiply by the selection of getting a red, which is 5 over 8. So this is 5 over 8. We multiply, we get that same probability as before. 3 times 5 is equal to 15. 8 times 8 is equal to 64. Finally, the probability of getting a blue than a blue. We have a 3 and 8, multiplied by a 3 and 8. So 3 over 8 multiplied by 3 over 8. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. 8 times 8, once again, is 64. And that's the probability of getting each one of those outcomes. As you can see, if you add all these together, we're going to get 64 over 64. 25 plus 15 plus 15 plus 9 is equal to 64. So that accounts for all probabilities. Now let's go through and answer these questions here. They're going to be really, really easy because we've set them up right here. So first off, what's the probability of getting a red than a red? Well, we've answered that already. A red than a red. That's this one right here. 
It's this answer right here. So the probability of getting a red than a red is 25 out of 64. Cool. Now what's the probability of getting a red than a blue? So a red than a blue is this line right here. Red than a blue, this is 15 over 64. So 15 over 64. What's the probability of getting at least one red? So of our outcomes here, which fulfills this? Well, a red and a red has at least one red, a red and a blue has at least one red, and a blue and a red has at least one red. A blue and a blue has no reds. So if we had to add all these together, 25 over 64 plus 15 over 64 plus 15 over 64, we would get the probability of getting at least one red. So 25 plus 15 plus 15 is 55, and this is over 64. There you go. That's the probability of getting at least one red. Alternatively, what we could actually do here is we could go, the total probability is 64 over 64, total probability is one, and you could minus this probability here, nine over 64, and get that same answer. 64 take away nine is 55, 55 over 64. Gives us the same answer. All right, finally we have, what is the probability of selecting one red and one blue, but not necessarily in that order? So there's two different outcomes here that fulfill that, a red then a blue, or a blue then a red. We go through and we add these together. 15 over 64 plus 15 over 64. 15 plus 15 is equal to 30, and the denominator stays the same. That's 64 there. So we have 30 over 64, which can be simplified further because two goes into both the top and the bottom. This can be simplified to 15 over 32. So there you go. That's how you use tree diagrams to solve this type of question here. It's pretty simple, right? It makes it really easy to follow. If you like this, by the way, please do us a big solid and hit the like button and subscribe and please leave a comment. It's all this type of engagement that helps our videos grow and spread for us to make more content for you here at the Tech Math channel. So let's go through and answer another question here. What about we have a look at one where we don't go through and replace and see what happens here. So we're gonna change this up a little bit. Let's have a look at this question right here. This question has a key difference here. We're still selecting red and blue balls out of bags and two balls are being selected but this time we are without replacement what does this mean so it means that we have 11 balls to start off with and then we select a ball out but we don't put it back and it affects this probability as we go along i think the easiest way to deal with this is as we go along so we're going to find out those same probabilities the probability of getting a red than a red the probability of getting a red than a blue the probability of at least one red and the probability of selecting one red one blue and the tree diagram well, it looks the same, and the outcomes are also the same. We can get a red, then a red, a red, then a blue, a blue, then a red, or a blue, then a blue. But it's the probabilities of getting these that now have shifted. Let's start out by assigning probabilities that occur for each event here. So first off, the probability of choosing a red or a blue ball as the first pick here. Well, the probability of getting a red, there's 11 balls all together. We have 7 over 11 probability of getting a red. Uh, probability of getting a blue, we have 4 out of 11. Nothing too bad at the moment. It's usually this next pick where things get a little bit funny where we don't have replacement. You've just kind of got to think what's going on here. So for this second lot, we haven't put a ball back. So we only have 10 balls to choose from. How many of those are red? Well, we've chosen one out. So we don't have seven reds anymore. We have six red balls left. So we have six out of 10 probability of choosing a red ball on that second guess if we choose a red ball to start off with. We can simplify this because two goes into both the top and the bottom, and let's do that. Let's make it simple, and we are going to get this being three out of five. The probability of choosing a blue, well, we have four blue balls left, and that's out of those 10 balls that where we have one now taken away from this 11. We have a four in 10 probability of choosing a blue ball. We can simplify this by dividing both two into the top and bottom, and we're going to get a two in five probability of choosing that ball for the second one. And as you can see here, three over five plus two over five equals five over five. It accounts for all the probability here. Now, on this part here, what is the probability of getting a red if we choose a blue ball first? Well, once again, we have 10 balls left how many of them are red? Well, this time we didn't choose a red ball first, so we still have those seven left. Uh, the probability of getting a blue ball, well, if we get rid of one of these, we have three of them now, and that's out of those 10 balls there. So that's the probability of getting a blue for the second pick if we get a blue ball first. Notice that it's a bit tricky there. Do take your time doing these if you were doing them and think about what's going on. 
So we can now go through and work out these probabilities. What's the probability of getting a red and a red? We're going to multiply 7 over 11 multiplied by 3 over 5. 7 times 3 is 21. 11 times 5 is 55. Cool. Now what about this one here? What's the probability of getting a red and a blue? Well, we have a 7 in 11 chance of getting that red ball. And then we have a 2 in 5 probability. So a 2 in 5. What's that going to be? 7 times 2 is 14. And 11 times 5 is 55. 14 over 55. Now let's have a look at this next one here. So what's the probability of getting a blue then a red? We have a 4 in 11 chance of getting that blue first. And that's going to be multiplied by that 7 in 10 chance of then getting that red ball. So 7 times 4 is 28. Uh, we have 11 times 10, which is 110. Uh, we can actually simplify this a bit further because uh, 2 goes into both the top and the bottom. Uh, if we divide 2 into both the top and the bottom, we're going to get 14 out of 55. Cool. Which, no surprise, is the same as this one right here. Finally, we have a blue, then a blue. We have a 4 in 11 chance of getting that blue first. Multiply this by the 3 in 10 probability of getting a blue second. We do this, we're going to get 12 out of 110. And 2 goes into this, so we can simplify it. It's going to become a 6 in 55 chance. Now at this stage, it may be worth going through and just making sure you've done yeah, the right, yeah. We have the total uh, amounts here at the top, adding up the 55. 21 plus 14 is 35. Uh, we have 45, 49 uh, plus 6 is 55. So it's looking pretty good so far. Let's go through now and answer our questions. What's the probability of getting a red than a red? Well, that's easy. That's this one right here. It's 21 out of 55. What's the probability of getting a red than a blue? Well, that's this one here. That's 14 out of 55. So 14 out of 55. What's the probability of getting at least one red? So at least one red. That's all of these ones right here. We add them together. 21 plus 14 plus 14. Well, that's going to be 28, 29. That's going to be 49. And that's out of 55. Or we can have 55 minus 6, which is going to be 49 over 55. Easy. Uh, probability of selecting one red and one blue. So, one red and one blue, that's these ones right here. 14 plus 14 is equal to 28, and that's over 55. Cool, there you go. So, as you can see, there's a bit of a difference whether we have with replacement or without replacement. And that's how you can use tree diagrams and the probabilities associated with different things there to solve these types of questions. I'll tell you what, I'll probably make a few more videos with a couple more examples. Watch out for these. But if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please... Remember, hit the like button and subscribe. And if you really want to support the Tech Math channel, why don't you consider becoming a patron? There is a link in the description below that will tell you how to go about and do that. Anyway, if you've sat through this so far and you've watched all of this, thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.